which is an extension of what was the VTOL animation mode where we're going to separate the VTOL animations from the landing animations. We decided to kind of expand the hovering gameplay and actually make the flat model a bit different. So we'll just take a, a look immediately at this. So we've directed all of the thrust downward when you're in hover mode, so it acts kind of like a helicopter. And so if I say tilt the gladius forward, the blue line will show you the velocity of the ship, which is kind of going downward and forward. And then if I tilt back to slow down, the ship will kind of rise and stop. So you can no longer hover at any angle. You have to hover level, which will make this a lot more believable to look at and a lot more feel a lot more realistic. So if you wanted to move forward, you say tilt your nose forward and you can still strafe up by pressing space and you can kind of control the strength of your thrusters to do that. So then you can kind of get a nice steady forward flight like this. If I wanted to stop, I can pull back like this. If I wanted to go back into normal flight mode, um, you hold W, uh, which on some ships will animate the thrusters, and then eventually you'll go back into normal flight mode. And then once you go below a certain speed, you can either forcefully turn on VTOL mode by pressing a button, or it'll go into that mode automatically below a certain speed. And then you can fly around like this, tilt right to go right, you can kind of drift like this and then roll left like that and you can kind of arrest that turn. You've lost your normal strafe controls obviously because all the thrust is going downward. Definitely feels a lot more fun to kind of fly at low speeds like this now and it looks really cool. The hope is that this kind of feels, it feels more believable and, and, and realistic in the universe. Um, but past that it's a lot more enjoyable and rewarding to fly at these low speeds. Previously you could, you know, do whatever you wanted effectively, as though you were in space. But now it kind of feels grand and it feels like you might expect a, a hover jet or a helicopter to fly. Um, and it just feels so much more cool to kind of, there's a little bit more depth right in the gameplay. The cockpit is... Okay, so <clears throat> they added that hover mode, I think, in 2019, but that was before I started to play. And I think they removed it after one or two patches. And they had all the right ideas with the hover mode. Everything the guy describes is almost exactly as it should be. But I think the real reason it failed, as in they're sort of rejecting it and I think CIG overreacting by removing it, is it's in the speed and the accelerations. So let's examine that a moment. Yeah, let's start here. Gladius forward, the blue line will show you the velocity. Now, you, you can see here how, how fast it accelerates and it's too much already. I can see that from, from yeah. The way the thing moves, it moves too fast. Like the moment it starts tilting, notice the forward acceleration starts instantly. On a real helicopter or VTOL jet, when you would start banking forward, there would be like a small amount of time where it's literally just hanging in the air and then just slowly accelerating forward. Like there's almost no inertia to the flight model. That's the first problem. Because players don't have um, control over flying the thing slow enough. And that's bad for two reasons. Okay, let's look at the other thing. <clears throat> Now you see, this here is the speed of the ship in meters per second. No longer hover at any angle, you have to hover level, which will make this uh, a lot more believable. See, that's, that's a good idea that you have, where you have to hover level and keep the ship level if you want to hover. That's great gameplay. Again, the problem is the accelerations and the lack of fine control. To look at and a lot more, feel a lot more realistic. So if you want. Okay, now he's already at 5 meters per second because he was already in the forward drift when he starts. Let's look. To move One forward, second, you say, two seconds. Forward. Two seconds later, he's at 28 meters per second. Let's look how fast that is. Now, it doesn't look that fast because the objects in the area are much larger than they appear and than you think that they are. I'm going to show you why that is. Okay, now let's look here. What is 5 meters per second? It's 18 kilometers per hour. That's already qu quite fast for a hovering helicopter. It's really fast. That, that's almost too fast if you're trying to navigate it on the landing set. And what is 28 meters per second? 100 kilometers per hour. <clears throat> no. And you can One, still strafe up by pressing two. space. Now we are at 84 meters per second. After four seconds of pressing space, 84 meters per second. It's 302 kilometers per hour. That's about... That's almost... That's faster than most helicopters find in real life at maximum speed. <clears throat> Some attack helicopters can go beyond that, but most transport helicopters, um, they will fly slower than that. 
Now, some might say, okay, it's a spaceship, it should fly faster. Well, my argument is, if you want flying to be from an atmosphere, and especially low atmosphere, it needs to be as slow as a helicopter or a VTOL jet. <clears throat> Let's examine how slow a real helicopter flies. Okay, this is a video of an Apache, and this is almost on takeoff, I stopped the video, almost on takeoff. Which means the engine power is already revved up to a point where it can hover. Which I think on the Apache, I'm not sure how much collective you need to take off on that thing. Because the DCS helicopter is not yet, so I can't check. My guess is the thing needs 60 to 70% collective and the related engine power to lift itself off the ground. So, take a look. Okay, now it's clearing the ground. 242. One second, two seconds. Now, two seconds, it cleared almost its own height from the ground. That, that's a relatively brisk, fast takeoff for a helicopter. Now, Apache has a, has a height of 4.75 uh, meters. And it's slightly below that. So let's say it's clearing 4.5 meters in two seconds. So how much is that? 2.2 meters per second. Because it's two seconds. That speed. Also notice that it, if it's clearing four meters in two seconds, basically 2.2 is the vertical takeoff speed right now on that thing, which is relatively fast. Now in Star Citizen, it would feel super slow, but in real life, that's actually really hard, fast takeoff, especially if you want to precisely hover above the ground. Let's look at the Apache, how fast it hovers when it's just taken off and it wants to slowly like hover above the ground. It's still rolling. Let's do a slight rolling takeoff. No, it's actually stopping. <clears throat> okay, it's clearing the ground. One second, two seconds. It's about four meters. Slightly less than four meters. Again, we have 1.8, 1.5, 1, almost two meters per second. And it was a relatively brisk takeoff. Notice it's it's lifting itself quite violently off the ground. So, with that evidence, we can say that a one point, let's say two point meter vertical rise, is something pretty fast if you're trying to do a realistic takeoff with a, with an aircraft, like in a vertical helicopter takeoff. Let's look how fast we can taxi. Second. Okay, now it's slowing down on the hover. See what it's going to do. See, this is an elegant slow hover you would get in a, in a trailer for a sci-fi game, or in, even some Star Citizen trailers portray ships flying that slow. However, in the game itself, you probably cannot fly this slow, because you cannot set the thruster strengths low enough to actually have that fine control over the thing. And that is the thing what, what ruined the, the hover mode. Okay, now it's in a stable hover. Now it's going to bank forward and start accelerating. Now notice how slow that is compared to the Gladius in the first video. Now oh, wait, here's a really nice scene of it. Okay, one second, two second, three second, four second. Now it cleared its own length in about four seconds. And the Apache has a length of about 18 meters. We have four point, yeah, which should be 4.25 meters per second in a relatively brisk forward hover. So we have four meters forward is a relatively fast hover. And I'm, I'm repeating these numbers because I'm going to show you another video of how fast things move in Star Citizen. So let's assume, for the sake of argument, if you want to have a fast, not slow, but a fast hover above the ground, in realistic helicopter speeds, you would be at four meters per second, which would be considered already fast. Okay, and the takeoff at two meters per second vertically is also quite fast for helicopter. And now it's going to just accelerate. Notice how it's banking. It's banking, and then it slowly accelerates. The Gladius would bank forward and then just start off a little, much faster. Okay, the audio is garbled on this one. So, show you this Hercules trying to park itself in in, in this area.
And this that ship, I'm not sure what the length of that ship is, it's probably 80 or 100 meters or something. Notice how, how fast it vertically rises and lowers. Notice that. It's because the pilot has difficulty keeping it straight, because every single tap of strafe up, strafe down, accelerates instantly. There's not enough slow control over the ships. And that's supposed to be a 450 ton ship. Notice how it's going up, now it's going up again. See, that's why I press space just a tiny bit to, to go up a bit. Notice it's already clearing half the ship height almost. You see here, um, lack of, everything's too fast, accelerates too fast, and lack of fine control over the speed. And now here is a Gladius takeoff. Remember, the Apache was two meters per second up after the engine power was already at the edge of taking off. This is from a cold zero, nothing, me just holding space. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> okay, five seconds after takeoff. The Velo vertical velocity is 40 meters per second because I'm going straight up. And I'm already at 107 meters height from zero. Notice how it still, everything feels super slow. It feels like a really slow takeoff. That's because everything on Microtech is about five times larger than it should be. I think they upscaled it to make it look larger and grander, but it messes with the feeling of the flight system because you already cleared off the ground 100 meters. And it feels like from a distance because of the buildings that suggest a smaller building than they actually are, that it's barely taking off. But notice what's happening here. 200 meters. 300 meters. The ship is rising at 45 meters per second. Now, what is 45 meters per second? That's a vertical rise, 45 meters per second in low atmosphere. That's way too fast. Let's look at the beginning of the video. <clears throat> you see here, I am at, where is it? Come on. You notice here, that's when the thrust kicks in. After press here, I'm pressing space in a moment here, it kicks in. Two, three, four, five. I'm already 130 meters and at 47 or something takeoff speed. Now, where was the Apache after, after that speed? After five seconds, it was about three or four meters after, above the ground. Here's a graph of that situation, which I measured. That's a Gladius strafe up on 1G, no afterburn. It's just pressing space. That's basically from the video, the data I collected. Within the first five seconds, it's somewhere in 130 meters already. Within the first two seconds, it's already at almost 50 meters. Within the first two seconds of me just pressing space, not even an engine spool up, just press space at 50 meters above the ground. You would have to accelerate the Apache video by, I think, 10 to 15 times to get to that point. And that's just wrong, the, how fast the tips are. And then I measured an F-35B, a video of an F-35B doing a vertical takeoff. Again, measured from the moment when the, the landing gear loses compression when it's, when it's um, taking off. And notice here, where you're after five seconds, you're about at two, three meters high. That's a bit slower, that's a bit lower than the Apache takeoff because the F-35 is a bit heavier. See the difference here? That's what kills the hover mode and all the feeling of flight in this game, because the accelerations are too fast. And here, as I incidentally also tested a Caterpillar. That's the weird thing about the Caterpillar. By accident, I think, pure accident, it's the only ship in the game that has a takeoff speed that would be realistic for a small fighter ship on VTOL. Notice here, the, the curve almost matches exactly that of F-35B. That's even too fast for a Caterpillar. And I think players want ships to behave realistically slow in atmosphere, in low atmosphere. And I make those claims often in the forums and then people hate on it, but I'd like to show you evidence why people want that. The first evidence would be, look at the trailers of some of the ships in Star Citizen, like the Valkyrie and the Squadron 42 trailers. When you see it fly, it flies much slower than players could make it fly. So the trailer artists in all the Star Citizen videos, they know exactly the ships are too fast because they artificially have to hand animate them to move much slower than they would in game. And here's some great proof from uh, Avatar. Let's watch this video. Notice here, nice. Okay, it's a really brisk takeoff on this one. Notice here, it takes off about a bit smaller than an Apache. It clears about one and a half meters, then just hovers elegantly. 
Notice, notice the bank. Notice the bank over here. Compare it to the Gladius video at the beginning, when when the um, when the Gladius already was moving too fast. Check us out. So if I say tilt the Gladius okay. forward, the blue line will show you the velocity of the. Sh There's a Gladius accelerated to probably 30 meters per second by that point. And this thing barely cleared the ground. It's banking. And look at this one. Careful, slow takeoff. Notice it's banking for it, slowly accelerating. And this is a beautiful one. Okay, now let's look at the moment it loses contact with the ground. One second, two second, three second. It's been, again, that's measured from the point where the thing is taking off. Not the engine power spool up, nothing, just from the takeoff point. In two seconds, it's clearing half its height and banking slightly forward. And where's the Gladius at that point in time? It is, in three seconds, it's 80 meters high. That's the Valkyrie um, ship in the, game, in, in the movie. Now they're flying much slower than the average ship in Star Citizen. Okay, now look. So it started here. It took about four seconds for the Valkyrie to clear its own dist its own length and in distance. About three and a half seconds to clear that space. And that ship is 101 meters long. So it's flying at 20, about 25 to let's say 30 meters per second. And that looks like a relatively good speed for 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 a ship like that. Now let's look how fast that is. What is what is 30 meters per second? 108 kilometers per hour. That's a moderate speed for a helicopter that wants to slide slow enough to actually see what's on the ground. Now, that's again what the Gladys is doing here. Remember when I said that everything here is much faster than it looks? Take Notice here. Nose forward and it tilts forward. and he's at 30. Notice. Within a fifth of a second, it goes from 30 meters per second to 45 meters per second. I can't even stop the video that fast. And here it looks like you're close to the ground, but you're actually quite far above the ground. You're actually 400 meters above the ground, and the rocks are much, much larger than they look like. And that speed is one and a half times faster than what you see over here with that thing. And that was just a takeoff bank. See, see how, how messed up the speeds are in Star Citizen. And there's one large, last part of the video. Helicopter's landing. For dinner. See, that's a beautiful landing hover. See that? Okay, let's, let's measure the timing here again. Okay, one second. Okay, one second, two second, three second. If the guy's height is one meter, one meter eighty, so it's probably less than two meters in three seconds, and that's the gentle hover you want. You want when you're landing somewhere, in VTOL or with a helicopter. Having such confined control over the ship that you can land with with a climber sink rate of one point five meters per second. That's actually quite fast for somebody who wants to jump out of it. So the ideal speed would be zero point five to one meter per second uh, descent, and it's currently almost impossible in Star Citizen to fly this slow. I might say, okay, you could um, lower the thrust output, but then it's kind of stupid the way it's programmed because it lowers the thrust output for everything. So if you want to pitch or bank, the thrusters who control pitch or bank are also reduced in power. Then you lose control of the ship, um, how fast you can play. So I think that's the key to remodeling the flight model. <clears throat> what I would do is... Now, the other problem is with the hover mode, I think it used to have some weird toggle that when it was close to the ground, it would auto toggle or something. What should happen is some organic thing. Basically, model all the ship thrusts and all the ships. Okay, there might be some main ships who are not limited by that. But for most ships, that they barely have enough thrust to keep themselves level in 1G, in 1G gravity and 1 uh, atmosphere pressure. And when they start banking left or right, depending on the mass of the ship, the ship should almost start rolling on the spot and falling and then start accelerating. Not like the Gladius in the first video, where it basically like, like it's made of plastic and just shoots forward the moment you bank it. And again, this should be measured by real-life helicopters. They should take videos of a large cargo helicopter, measure when it banks forward how fast it actually starts moving forward.
and replicate that. And I think the, the problem here is the game is too detached from realistic speeds because in this situation, when you don't have any identified objects and just fly above the ground for fun, you have no idea how, how large the objects are. And you don't feel like you don't need a precision of, of precise movement at that point. However, the moment you have something in a relatable object, like a helicopter pad you want to land on, or a friend waiting at the ground, then you notice how messed up the scale is and how, how insensitive the controls are. And people always say that, <clears throat> when I make the argument about barely taking off, that what if it's on a higher gravity? What if it's fully loaded? But here's the thing, it's not a hard cutoff. So let's say if, if, the, if we model the ships that they can take off vertically, like flows from the ground, for the first 10 seconds at least, until they clear some altitude, with a maximum of, let's say, 1.5 meters per second vertical takeoff speed. And let's say the ship is fully loaded, then maybe it would be 1.1 meter per second. Like, there should be a small reserve for different conditions. It doesn't mean that there's a hard fall off. Like, okay, um, you can barely take off this, and then the conditions are slightly different, then there's no takeoff anymore. That shouldn't be the case. There should be small... Small reserves of power, like in real life. Currently, reserves are basically you can rise with 45 meters per second, which is about 20 times faster than it should be. And that's simply too much. And that would, I think, fix the flight model. So the first thing would be weaken the thrust on all ships so they behave like helicopters in, in low atmosphere. And the thing is with... Um, it should be the same for most ships, actually. Even a reclaimer should have similar takeoff speeds within one or two meters maximum compared to really small ships. Because in real life, for example, helicopters, the, they are built proportionally for economic reasons and for mass reasons to only have as much engine power as the maximum weight can permit and the stuff they need to carry. That's why a huge helicopter doesn't have two gigantic turbines like an MI-8 or an MI-24 or an Apache. Because it was built for a smaller purpose. And that should be incorporated into the ship design of Star Citizen. So let's sum it up. Make the helicopter, no, spaceships, have enough thrust to barely lift themselves from the ground and attach the takeoff speeds and the accelerations, how fast the speed builds up, to that of, of helicopters. And then you produce realistic behavior of helicopters and then give players fine control over it, which means make sure that the, um, the pitch, yaw, bank controls are responsive enough even with the veto thrust being much lower than it is right now. And that's basically it. All you have to do is make them as slow as helicopters in low atmosphere or veto jets. And this video is about atmospheric flight. I have another video planned for zero G flight, but that's for a different topic. So I hope this was informative and perhaps fun to watch and thanks for watching.